Um, uh, in, in this particular case, I'm going to open it on my Mac. Yeah, so I usually keep it open on another one. And that's where I do the, uh, let's just do like three minutes start. All right, so we get a countdown now and, whoops, I overshot with my cursor. I have a synergy set up so I can share my, share my stuff. All right, so we got like, uh, oh, I need to mute something. I can hear double echoes here. There we go. Squeaky chair. I'm going to have to WD-40 that puppy. Actually, my whole, yeah. Is that where it's at, lithium grease? I don't know. That's That sounds dangerous. Uh, I have, uh, I also, it's all hardwood here, and it's super, um, I need to also start recording. It's, uh, it's, it's super squeaky on the floor, so every time I move. I have audio coming from somewhere. It's driving me bananas. Let me see if I can figure out the uh, OBS resizing thing again. Somebody pointed me to this, and I fixed it at one point. But every time I set up a new source, I have to redo it. We've got a minute and 20 seconds. <laughs> OBS MDI source resize. Uh, funny thing is, is uh, even though I haven't streamed for like three weeks, uh, my my follower count just kept going up and up. I'm like over 200 now. <laughs> Helps to have that Microsoft name behind you. you know. So if you haven't watched live streams, I mean, it's all very casual. It's... Sweet. Not at all. All right, here we go. I'm going to go to full me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. And then we've got a friend with us today, Jonathan Dick from the Xamarin Components team. Let me flip over to me and you. There you are um, on my hi. screen. Somewhere. It's got the resizing problem. See how you were small and now you're. Now you're bigger. So you're more important than I am. That's why I make your video the large video. And then I'm just a little tiny guy in the corner. So why don't you introduce yourself to the, to the folks who have joined us early and uh, tell them who you are. How long have you been with uh, Xamarin and Microsoft? Yeah, so I'm, I'm Jonathan. I might be better known as Redth on uh, the interwebs. Um, so I've been with Xamarin for a long time. Um, I, think, I think longer than David. I think I remember oh, David joining up. So, I mean, we've all been kind of part of the Xamarin community since, hey, before Xamarin was even a thing back in the, the Monotouch days and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've been joined in, oh, goodness, it's been like, I think it's been three, about three years ago now that I joined up with, or no, has it been three years that we've been at Microsoft? I don't know. I've lost track of time. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been about three, three and a half since Microsoft because I joined, okay, so then I joined it's been like a year afterwards. Then I must be pushing five and a half or so total uh, yeah. in like the Xamarin world. Have you always so, been on the component stuff? 
Yeah, you know what? I joined up um, as just somebody making components, and um, that kind of morphed into as people shifted around. Now I'm I'm the team lead of components, and you know we still do a lot of the same things that I was doing when I joined. But um, there's been some interesting things too, like we've you know worked on a Xamarin Essentials and yeah. working on some more fun stuff that uh, we'll get to talk about someday. Yeah, someday, someday soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so lost soul, poor lost soul. That's the. Uh... You're having trouble with your fabulous F sharp demo. Unfortunately, I am no good at F sharp <laughs> fabulous. Stuff. Me neither. I, tr- I even tried. Like they they posted a, a thing over the weekend that um, 4.0 had been you know added to fabulous and it was now supported. So I was like, oh, I wonder if I could go add shell to a fabulous app. I I couldn't find my way. I couldn't do it. So couldn't do I, it. I need to learn. I, I really want to because I really there's a lot of things that I like about fabulous, but if anybody is listening, if anybody is in the stream and wants to help poor Lost Soul 0589, help him out. Help her out. Help Lost Soul out. It'd be fabulous if you did. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, uh, by the way, in honor of uh, in honor of this, let me switch to my other camera here real quick. In honor of having you on, I am drinking a Canada Dry today. You know, because you are you are on the other side of the border. I won't say the wrong side of the border, but you don't ha- you don't have a team. You you don't have a team in the cup, so that's all that really matters. That's very nice. Um, okay, so we're kind of just chatting here and waiting for people to join in. Kind of the way these things usually go is folks start to trickle in, and then they'll they'll drift off and come back and things like that. So, um, I, how long are you uh, do you have? How long are we gonna go? Uh, I mean, however long you you have, and however long this takes, I guess I don't know. You can you can kind of tell me when you want to wind it down. Um, yeah, we typically go for uh, maybe two hours. Um, yeah, which is is quite lengthy. But uh, I don't know if you have other obligations. I'm going to skip a few meetings because this is going to be fun. Yeah, I, I skipped one for you today already, so um, we're we're good. All right. So uh, what we're going to do today is uh, learn about bindings, and we're going to kind of do this together, right? So what do you yeah. have in mind? So, I mean, one of the things that I had done, in, I, and way back in the past, uh, we used to have a, a binding set of bindings to the, like, Fire OS SDK stuff. So if you've got um, a Kindle Fire device, I mean, these are all Android devices, right? So yeah. if you want to make your Xamarin app run on it, I mean, you can already do that today. It's pretty easy. It kind of just works. Uh, but Amazon has some like additional SDKs and and like little different pieces you can kind of interoperate with. And they've released um, like Java SDKs to do this. Like if you can see on my page here, um, I'm not sure if you can see my page. If you can, yet, my desktop. We'll switch. Hang on a second. There we We've go. got um, you know they've got a whole bunch of different things. They've got mobile ads. They've got login. Uh, one of the ones that. I was more interested in for my own use in, in my own app is this in-app purchasing bit. Um, and then there's kind of a maps layer, uh, cloud drive and device messaging. So, you know, if you want to get like deliver your app to be the most full experience that you can have it be on Fire OS, you're probably going to want to use one or more of these SDKs. Um, and I think, like I said, I think the most interesting one is in-app purchasing because I think a lot of people do that anyway in their apps. And so if you want to do that on Amazon, uh, on Fire OS, you, you have to use their SDK. Right. So, yeah, I thought we'd kind of just go through building some of these. Um, I, I've got like a, a rudimentary one in my own app from <clears throat> a long time ago that I'm, I'm not going to actually use. We'll, we'll do this kind of new. And I did like a hack job of it and we'll kind of step through. You'll see what I mean by a hack job and where we can kind of improve bindings and stuff. So the idea here is, yeah, we, uh, being on the components team, we do a lot of bindings um, and we get a lot of questions around, especially Android bindings. And there's no, unfortunately, there's no easy answer to a lot of it. I mean, usually it's like, it's just one of those cases that you deal with the the binding issues on a, a case by case basis. And you, you kind of start to learn patterns and, learn how to to kind of use different strategies to do things so hopefully we can kind of uncover some of those along the way here great so i mean first things first uh, obviously we got to download the sdk and now i will say the the interesting thing with this one is uh, amazon has never given us a if you can look at the url that's like in the bottom corner there it's not like a versioned url and so you can see they they do tell us that they've changed things like in you know version whatever on july of 2018, and some of these have been updated more recently. 
Um, but one of the, the problems that, and reasons why we don't actually have bindings for these or distribute bindings for these is because we can't really redistribute the SDKs themselves according to how we interpret, you know, the license agreement and all, all that legal stuff that, um, you know, nobody likes to deal with, but being part of Microsoft, unfortunately, that's, that's kind of a reality for us. So, uh, it, it, we can certainly make bindings and, you know, post the code to it. And that's what we'll do some of today for sure. Um, and, and you guys can kind of take those and build them for your own app and, and be in agreement with the developer, uh, terms and conditions and everything. So I've gone ahead and downloaded that URL. Um, like I said, if, even if we were to do something where we down, like in the past for other components, we've done it where we'll download at build time for you on your machine, um, the uh, native SDK bits, because that means we're not redistributing, uh, redistributing them. You're downloading them at build time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and usually we could do something similar with this, except that they don't give us a URL. So like this URL is always the same. So when they release an update, you know, suddenly that might just stop working for you because the URL is just the same and it expects a certain version uh, in the binding. So I've downloaded these things, I'll crack them open, take a look at them. And uh, we'll start setting up some project structure for doing the actual bindings of these. And I kind of wanted to walk through you know, all of that process because like, this is, this is just how we do things uh, day to day with new SDKs and things that we bind. <laughs> awesome. Hey, we just had uh, a whole mess of people join us from Brian Lagunas's stream. Oh, so hello, you. everybody. They, they joined and they said, hey, that's not David. Well, I like it's to bring not. on smarter people than me. <laughs> See, that's how this works. He's See, David's the smarter one because he brings other people on to do his work for him. So, And I, my whole job today is really just to make sure that John's face stays where it's supposed to stay in the stream <laughs> because it keeps moving all over the place. It's uh, a yes. crazy OBS glitch. But uh, anyway, welcome everybody. What we're doing today is talking about Xamarin bindings. So uh, as John has mentioned, and this is kind of one of the things we have to do also because we're going to be streaming for a couple hours here, is just continually remind folks who join what we're working on. So we're doing bindings, C-sharp bindings to a Java library for doing Firebase. Or not Firebase, sorry, Fire nope. OS. Fire OS. I knew so there was a fire, fire in there. There's yeah. a fire. There's a fire somewhere. Um, so if you're not dealing with your own fires at work, you can listen in to us and learn about C-sharp bindings. All right. That's it. That's I was the re-intro and the welcoming of Very the Lagunas nice. Raid. Back to hey, Lagunas Raid. So I, I've downloaded the, the uh, SDKs for the Amazon Fire OS stuff. I've just got them kind of extracted here. Um, now what I'm going to do is start setting up the actual project structure here that we're going to work with. So I've got a, a folder in here, a blank folder, clean slate. Um, and then what I, you know, I honestly, I usually cheat and I come over here, I come over somewhere to an existing recent binding that I've done. Um, so let's pick, do, 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 let's pick 310. I just did this one recently and I like to just copy some of the, the stuff over from it because that's just easier than doing it again myself totally from scratch. So first of all, we're going to get a cake file. Um, I, we, we probably, I mean, to make this complete, you know, we want to, we want to do this um, and I'll show you what we're going to do exactly like we're going to download the actual external package uh, as part of the build process so if you download this repo if you check it out you can just run the cake file and it'll go download the thing for you put it in the right spot and kind of build it all um, so I've got VS code open as well in this folder and I like to just you know kind of work I work in here and I work kind of back and forth with VS code and um, you know Visual Studio proper but it's, sometimes it's just easier to do like simple text editing right here in VS Code. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of clear out some of this stuff that we had for the other project. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to make a, a zip URL. Let's put that up here. We're just going to go grab the, the actual Amazon SDK URL. Put that back in here. And so this cake file, if you're not familiar with cake, cake is kind of this wonderful um, C sharp build language. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's the actual right explanation of it, but basically lets you write build scripts and do kind of common things that you otherwise would require a little bit more code to do. And it lets you do it all in C sharp. So like I can do this download file and it will grab that zip file for me, put it where I want it to. And then I can extract, I think it's extract zip. Um, and I can just kind of, you know, do all of these things. 
A tiny tooster is asking, uh, toot yeah. uh, if it's okay to ask questions. Absolutely, please ask questions. And, I think I know uh, who that might be. Yeah. We've also, I noticed that uh, Alex, chicken of the scene, just joined. Um, so, hey, welcome. Yeah, definitely cool. ask questions. Drop them here in the chat, and uh, I will interrupt John, and we'll, we'll get Yeah, please answer. do. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of downloading the zip, extracting the zip file. I don't know if that's the right thing, but we're going to kind of stage this as if it's already been done for us here, just so that we uh, we move along a little bit more quickly here. And I've got like these different tasks in the cake file. So when I run this externals task, um, and if we do... Hey, bump that font up a little bit. That's pretty small. All right. If you know how. Well, it's a web browser, right? So just zoom. Yeah, I just yeah, bump the whole thing up. It's all web. So what we would do here, um, first of all, I need to get my cake bootstrappers. Um, so this whole cake system relies on like this kind of, you, you get like a PowerShell script on Windows or you get a bash script on Mac and you can just kind of do the, the right thing um, to execute your cake file. They'll go download all the dependencies and everything like that for you. So I'm gonna go grab the bootstrapper scripts out of here. Again, I just like copy and pasting stuff that I already know exists how I need it to be. And let's just do build.ps1. I'm not going to worry about, oh, that is, that is PS1. I'm not going to worry about Mac right now. Um, sorry, Mac users. Um, <laughs> I'm a recent convert back to Windows, so um, I'm going to give the Mac users a little bit of a hard time. Well, that's one of the nice things about what we do is we, we float back and forth between the two. We're, we're all about the end users. So I can run this build.ps1 file now, and I can say go run the target externals. Let's see if this actually works for me or not. Oh, I'm, see, I'm, I'm still not completely a convert because I used the wrong slash there, so. <laughs> oh, it doesn't like my cake because I copied it. So we have this, this notion of loading external uh, other cake files in your script. I don't really actually need this, so I could just get rid of that. Um, you can see the target is uh, specified by the argument, and that's what I kind of did down here was just say run the externals target. I'm going to fix this, though. If I can figure out my uh, terminal skills here, so this should run the download extract zip file. Uh, let's go find out what that is. Extract zip file. I did that wrong. I'll go find another component that I've done this on recently. Oh, even better yet, we have Google, right, guys? This is how I will, all of this work, right? Isn't it? There's a there's a couple links just... to chat to some some cake files and shell scripts. If oh, very nice. You know, I don't know that this is related to what you're doing, but I don't know. If, I think it was unzip. I'm, I'm just going to give that a go and, and pray that it works. And we can kind of trudge through this together. There we go. So it should be downloading the file. It should be extracting to our our folder. Uh, I do have to fix this. You can see this build criteria or this uh, task criteria. So. Um, that's not really, this is always going to run, right? Because it, that file doesn't exist. So it's going to say this task should only run if this file doesn't exist. And that file will never exist because I copied and pasted. Um, but so that ran, that task ran. We should be able to go in and see, uh, get my right window here. Should be able to see the externals folder was made. We've got the zip file here. We've got the Amazon SDK Oh, and It's kind of nested deep inside, which is a little bit annoying. We could clean that up later. Uh, but most importantly, we've got, you know, our different SDKs here. Uh, and I think the one that we'll start with is in-app purchasing because, like I said, I'm kind of selfish and uh, I, I want that for my own. Um, and I have a version of it, but it's it's ugly. So we're going to we're gonna create a nice, clean version of it. So I'm going to go back into my, my VS Code window here. I like to do, like, this kind of project structure of having a source folder um, and then having samples folders to kind of illustrate how to actually use the code. Uh, inside here, I'm going to make another folder for um, in-app purchasing. And then inside of here, I'll have a CS project. Now, this is kind of unorthodox. I know most people probably, you know, would actually use C uh, Visual Studio to do this. Um, and, and sometimes I would. But when I do bindings like this, because we kind of use the same techniques over and over again, it's sometimes it's just a lot easier to copy and paste some source files around. Um, and so let me go back to... This guy here, and I'm just going to copy this SDK style project. Now, this is kind of interesting. We do, and I don't think this is actually what you get out of the box anymore with, or at this point in time with um, Xamarin Android. When you do a new binding project, you'll probably get the old style project. And there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, they both will work the same. One of the things that we've found really useful about SDK style projects is 
when we link other projects into it, this is maybe not the best example. Let me go find one that that shows you what I'm talking about. Um, we you basically get the the NuGet creation uh, and the dependency chain comes into that NuGet package, and you get that all kind of for free because the SDK style of project. Um, you're you're doing project references, and it'll turn those into package references for you. Um, so that's kind of useful for that. Uh, what? So do we need to update our, our template for that? Um, you know what? It's one of those, like, we, we probably should at some point. Um, but the problem with that right now is we don't we, – we're using – here, I'll flip back over to the, the – sorry. You'll see this uh, CS project in a second here. Let me go into it. And I'll, I'll explain to you why we don't do that right now. Um, so here's a, another binding. This is for Android AR core scene form stuff. And you'll see there's a project reference here to the core project. Now, what we're, the reason that we might not want to bump up our templates to do this yet is we're using this third-party package. And this is uh, Oren Novotny's build extras. Uh, and the, it's fantastic, and it works really well. But uh, I'm not sure what you know the rules around us, including... Um, some third-party dependencies like this that we don't control are so yeah gotcha um yeah so this this is kind of the magic that makes this happen and, and makes us be able to use the sdk style project uh for bindings um and you can see here so we've got the package reference you know uh, in this project is for some support stuff and then this project reference and then we also add in the package information all up here right for our package version and, and title and id and everything now the cool thing about when you're using the sdk style project for this for these bindings is when you have these project references and you do a NuGet, you know, or a MS build target pack, you get a NuGet package that just knows that this, the NuGet ID for this core project is now a dependency of this NuGet package. So it's, it's really powerful when you start like having bindings that have multiple dependency chains and everything. Um, and so you just kind of get that for free. Whereas we used to maintain that all just manually, and that got really tricky in things like Google Play services, where um, the dependency chain tree is like three or four nodes deep in in most cases, and like other things depend on other things. It's just it was a big mess. So this this makes it a lot easier. Uh, Jacob says for MS Build SDK Extra, you don't have to use package reference if you set yeah. the SDK project type. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So you're, yeah, you're you're basically saying come up here and we kind of just set the thing to um, MS build extra. So the NuGet ID and then slash the version. Um, I, I I will admit that that's one of those things that I've just like. I think it didn't work the very first time that I tried using it, so we've just kind of copied and pasted stuff around. But we should we should get in the habit of using that. So thank you for that for reminding me of that. Um, okay, so you know I'm copying and pasting this guy in here. Obviously, we have to do some work on changing names of things, right? So like the assembly name, and and this is kind of that give or take of whether this is the right way to do, you know, the best way to do it. Um, but I kind of like doing it this way. So I'm going to name it Xamarin Android uh, Amazon in a purchasing because I like to try and hit max path issues on Windows as much as I can. <laughs> So root namespace, that usually doesn't really matter a whole lot for us. Um, there's a few other things in here that are kind of interesting too. Uh, we've got this, you know, we, this has been kind of the default for a while now using class parse as the class parser. So um, when the binding generator goes in and looks at a jar file and says, oh, what types exist in here? We used to have this old way of doing it and the newer way is called class parse. And it's basically um, the smart folks on the Android team wrote this um, binary, uh, class file parser to extract all of like the method and class and, and different information out of the the actual API, and it's just a little bit more complete than using Java's own tools to introspect the uh, jar files with with their own tools. Uh, and then we've got this Android code gen target. So when the binding generator actually generates the C# -sharp binding code for it, this is a, a sort of a newer version of that code generator, and it kind of creates more. Uh, Efficient code. I don't. I don't remember all the details. Other than this, this is better. This one's better. It's best. <laughs> and if we're going to make NuGet packages, I mean, we we kind of talked earlier that it's kind of difficult to do that because we can't depend on we can't redistribute the the SDK files because Amazon's license are like, yeah, you should only do that if you're actually using it in your app. Um, we we kind of err on the side of, of caution, uh, but. 
because they don't give you a, a, a URL that stays static for a given version, it's kind of hard to, to do this. But you might want to generate NuGet packages just to have like in your own local NuGet feed, or maybe you want to upload them to your own private NuGet feed. That's that's fine, I'm sure. Um, so Xamarin Android, Amazon, in app pur purchase. Let's see if I can type today too. You know what? Why are we doing extra work? Uh, copy and paste that. Well, man, my typing skills, you get to all see how bad, how many times I hit backspace. Well, it turns out when you're live streaming, uh, typing goes downhill. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to pull this out of here, too, because we're not really, we're not really owning that. And I'm just going to, you know, you could update these to more proper URLs, and maybe we can come back and do that later. But for the sake of simplicity right now, I'm just going to leave those out. Now, I like to version, when we go and version our own things, I like to version them similar to what the actual vendor version things as. So I'm going to come back here and say, like, okay, they're 2.0.76. So that's the version I'm going with here. And the rest is kind of, you know, the boilerplate. We've got a metadata transform file. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, we've got a path to the, in some cases, we have AAR libraries that we can include. Um, I don't know offhand which this is, so we should probably go figure that out. Um, this is a jar file. Okay, great. So we can copy the we can copy the file name. We can probably copy the whole path to from from externals. Uh, so let's copy that that one first, and then we'll copy the jar file name as well. We could probably. Clean up how it extracts. That wouldn't be a bad idea, but oh, it didn't copy it for me. I have to actually copy the name with the text highlighted. I'm still kind of, you know, I, I just said earlier I'm I'm a Mac recent Mac convert or recent Windows convert from Mac, and I'm still learn, uh, used to some of the Mac things. Um, and then we often include this external dependency info file. This is like a well, this turns into a third party notices file. Um, we're not going to do that here, so that's fine. Now, you'll notice that like the, there's a, oh, yes, I'm just looking at the comments, Android Dex Tool uh, D8. I don't know if I'm that brave right now. I mean, I'm not, I think that would work fine, but I'm going to, I'm just going to leave that out right now. Uh, maybe, maybe later we'll give that a try if we have time. Um, so the reason I've got this in the item group none, um, the SDK style projects don't work so perfectly yet. And because they don't work so perfectly yet, if we don't add this in as like just an item, um, the actual like mono or Xamarin Android items that we will use don't cause those items to show up in the IDE. Um, so add, this is just kind of a simple trick to say like, well, give me the actual um, jar file to show up in my my IDE, which you'll see in a second. I keep forgetting the app word, and this is a jar file. And we'll do the same down here. We'll just copy and paste this whole path, and we'll paste it into this spot here. So this is where the actual file gets included. Now, we had it set to library project zip, which is for the AAR files. Like an AAR file is basically just a, um, it's like a zip file with the jar file in it, as well as it can contain like Android resources, uh, Android manifest files, ProGuard configs, all sorts of different stuff. So um, we have to change this though. In this case, we have a couple options. We could do an input jar, which will mean that it's going to actually um, process the jar file and try and create bindings for the APIs in that given jar file, but it's not going to actually include it in the, the DLL that gets produced. So probably for this, we don't want that. We can do embedded jar, which is the same as input, except that the DLL does get included uh, in the actual DLL that, that's produced that we build. Then there's also this concept of reference jars. So there's like an embedded reference jar, which means I need this jar file in my DLL because maybe some other jar file I'm binding needs it, but I don't actually need to surface the the APIs from that jar file in .NET in C Sharp. Um, so you can use it for that. There's a few different build actions, I think, beyond that too, but those are kind of the main ones we use. Where, where do you find those build actions? There, the, we do have good documentation on this. Um, I, I think even if you just, you know, uh, Xamarin Android embedded jar binding, I bet you that'll that'll pull it up. Uh, binding a jar file. I mean, there's some pretty good, pretty good docs here. Yeah, right. well, there we go. Embedded jar. 
in Pachara. Because I, I remember the last time I did a, a binding, I wasn't working for Microsoft yet. And uh, the only way I was successful was by nagging you. <laughs> <laughs> And they, like this stuff didn't exist, so it's good yeah. to see that our documentation has gotten better here. Yeah, it's 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 pretty great actually. I mean, and, and even it goes into like there's this troubleshooting binding section, which you know there's a lot of different cases where Java just becomes tricky to, to generate bindings automatically for, and so we end up having to do some changes, which you'll see in a bit here. Um, and they go through like a whole bunch of different you know possible problems, right? Like. Um, some types are missing. Well, what do you do? Well, you know, the library might be need another uh, Java library referenced for it to surface its own types. It's there's like just all sorts of different rules and um, yeah, good good docs here. Go, you definitely should read through these if you're doing bindings at all. Um, I think I, I have most of these cases memorized by now, but um, they were definitely worth the read. All right, so we've got our embedded jar set up. Um, I've got the the I, I'm not gonna why. why? Uh, should we should we do this? Should we switch it up live? Should I try this new style? One six four zero. I know there's like a, a two dot release too. I haven't gotten brave enough to try that, but maybe we can try this. Oh, version was at one six four zero. All right. Jacob says the last time he did an Android binding was Arc ArcGIS about four years ago, and it was massive. Oh, that would be. I think I've seen attempts at that before and so kudos to you that is that is a gnarly library to bind by so jacob you aren't doing bindings at your current company it's just all c sharp for you no need for any of those uh sounds lovely native libraries i know they have many apps where jacob works so i'd be surprised if you cool didn't. cool tiny two all right all right, so who is Tiny Tooster? You know who Tiny So Tooster I think is? this is Tom um, from London, yeah. if I remember correctly. <laughs> it's been a long time, Tom, so hope you're doing well. Getting compile warnings using a Java bindings to wrap around Java card reader library. Most of them amount to create multi-dex main dex class list warning. Well, that's a warning, so that should be okay. Like, I, I, I know I've seen that too, Um the, the, some of the warnings are harder to work around, unfortunately, uh, because of how the generator works. Like, there's not always the option to say, like, ignore that warning. Um, but, yeah, that should be okay. But, I mean, you know, we could, we can definitely talk about some other binding errors later, too, if we got some time. So, in in the spirit of, like, I know this is, this is so, uh, this one's going to be kind of a pain to do. Maybe I won't do it this way. Let's, let's get into Visual Studio already, if I can not. I know it's really weird. Everyone's like, "Why are you why why are you doing bindings in VS Code? What's going on with that?" Um, so, I think um, let's start with continue without code for a second here. What is Nathaniel showing us? Something from Mr. Douglas. Oh, we've got a little gist here on Xamarin Android bindings. Um, so let's do a solution. So just on Xamarin Android bindings. Cool. Like I don't know if I can open that easily. I don't know if you can somehow share that. I don't have uh, I don't have the thing set up to go back and forth between my machines that I'm looking yeah, at the chat. Nice. All right, so let's do a blank solution. Um, where did I put this code? I like to keep things near the root, as you will see, because I've been burned oh, just a few times on uh, max path issues. All right, so Xamarin, Android, Amazon. Let's just make that the folder. Uh, and I think I called it. I think I called it that in the cake file. Not sure, but let's just do that. All right, so we got a blank, blank solution. We have a project file we already made, so we can add an existing project. And let's go down my code. Xamarin, Android. Xamarin, Android, Bindinator. Bindinator. That's what we use on uh, on Play Services and Firebase and stuff now. So we we actually found like these SDK style projects. We found it was not so bad to um, basically query Maven, get the information back about dependencies and stuff, and just we generate. We have a like a, a Razor template that generates the actual uh, binding projects themselves, the actual CS projects themselves now. Uh, and it's just a little bit more efficient of a way for us to manage that massive of a set of bindings. All right, so let's link in our CS project here finally. Oh, no, one or more errors occurred. What error? 
I bet you it was the uh, build SDK extras that I changed. <laughs> What you get for using VS Code? Uh, yeah, that's what I get for using VS Code. I know. Here, let's just I'm backing that change out. Sorry. Just in case, that's the reason. Oh, why can't I add a new new project now? Oh, I can. No, not add to source control. Wow. Ah, <laughs> oh, goodness. Clicking the wrong buttons here. Do source in effort to say let's go for it. That was the reason. I'm not I'm not pointing fingers or anything, but <laughs> I probably typed it wrong or something. That's I'm sure that's what's happened. All right, so you can see here we've got our basic binding project. Um, you can see the the jar file that I added in here. This is that remember that build action, the item group none, um, just to get it to show up because it doesn't show up otherwise. Um, we probably will need to restore NuGet packages um, before that'll be, uh, it'll probably do it anyway for us. I'm, I'm kind of stuck in old school ways sometimes where I forget that now they do some of these things for us. Well, this is, this is your Mac background coming out right there because if you yeah. do that, Mac doesn't yeah. handle it for you. Yeah, exactly. I was just oh, and then that this morning. we've got this, so I copied in stuff, right? So I copied in... Probably, oh, it's missing the metadata, that's why. Because I copied stuff in and I didn't copy all the files over. So we're going to have to make a metadata XML file in a transforms folder. This is why you don't do it in VS Code, right? Uh, and then we'll make a new file called metadata.xml. And now VS should be happy. Yeah, I know, I know. Transforms, what did I name wrong here? Let's show all our files and see what's happening. No, it should work. Maybe I need to reload the project. Or maybe it's just not going to open it for me. Oh, yeah, you know I can't move it. It's not the same. Metadata.xml. Um, who's spotting the problems that I'm causing? Transforms. Yeah, well, Transforms has the... Oh, I didn't put it in the folder. That's... Uh, that, that. That'll make a difference. Apparently. I don't know why it's not letting me copy it in there. Let's just do it. Let's go even a step farther back and do it more old school. Alex says you made transforms a file instead of a folder. Did I? Oh, yes, you're right. Thank you. All right. Let's learn. Let's, uh, this, we should rename this to like teach John how to code. <laughs> teach John files system basics. You know, that's, a, that's another wonderful thing about Twitch streaming. It's quite humbling. <laughs> That it is. But all right, it so it also helps everybody else know that we're all human. We're all just figuring oh, and, things out. And this is yeah, we're stumbling through this just like everybody else. So I forget the opening element name in here. The, um, so it's it's an XML file. That's uh, metadata, of course. So basically, oh no, let's not do that. Let's get let's get out here. Here, guys, watch this. There we go. Remove the temptation. Yeah. All right, so we've got this metadata file, right? And this is this is kind of this is where I think we should probably spend a little bit of time. I think I saw a comment up earlier that like to the effect of like people should know how the generator works and how the binding process actually works, which is so true because once you actually understand what's happening, it's really not that hard. Um, so I'm going to do a build first of all, and um, so it failed. That's that's fine. That's cool. Oh, we're missing a project reference. Yeah, I know we we don't have that project. I'm still going to edit the project by hand. Even if I can't do it in VS Code, I'm still, still going to do it by hand. So this was left over from my bad copy pasting, which I think I'm just kind of proving a case for why not to do the way that I do it. All right, let's build again. So sometimes when we do this, if this was the first time I did it ever, I would be, I'd be like saying prayers to, you know, the binding gods here, because if I get really lucky, it might just work. It might just succeed. And I might have a binding that just works because it works. Usually that's not what happens though. So let's let's see for a second here. I think this one, I don't remember if this one doesn't work or if it does, because I, I was saying before, I've done this one in the past for my own app, um, but I did a really just quick and bad job of it. So I'm kind of excited to do a, a better version of it. Oh, so yeah, this one does. This one does just work, which is absolutely amazing. Well, it succeeded um, in building. Right. Work, okay. That's a different thing. That is that is fair. So we can see here I've got the actual file 
built. Now I like to, oh, this is new. I'm used to opening it up in, why didn't that open with, where's my uh, IL spy? I might just have to go this way. So one of the invaluable tools in binding, um, which you'll see there are a couple others, is IL spy or whatever disassembler kind of tool that you have that you want to use. So we can see here, like it, it built, that's that's cool. Um, look at how ugly some of that is, right? com.amazon.device.iap, and we've got some internal bits in here. Um, you know, we, what we could go through, and actually, why don't we do that a little bit right now? Let's go through and look at the, the Java side. So this is the other part of it. We, we kind of want to see, you know, what the jar file looked like originally, what APIs existed in it, and that's going to help us kind of inform what should exist in the output, obviously, that we want to see bound. Um, See if this does it. Yep. Another invaluable tool is this. Um, uh, well, I'm using JADX GUI right now. I love the GUI version of JADX. There's JD uh, GUI as well as another app that's pretty great. Um, basically, there's a few different apps you can get that can kind of decompile the, the jar file and you can inspect it visually. Um, you can obviously dump this out on the command line too, but that's just not my, my uh, efficient way of doing things for myself. So. Um, you can see here all of these different namespaces or packages names in Java. Um, so what we can kind of do here is if I take that window there and IL spy over here, we can kind of start to compare, um, you know, what what's happening in both places. Like, do we have a a general um, feeling that everything that we're, we're we've got on the Java side is available now on the C sharp side? And you know, so far it's looking all right. Purchasing listener. Um, you'll see that we get some event args created, and part of that is because for anytime we kind of in, encounter this an interface, uh, the, anytime the generator encounters that, and uh, anytime it also encounters, I think this is the one it would be on, like a, a register listener or an add listener and a remove listener, it's going to try and automatically create like a C sharp event pattern for you in the in the generated code, and that's what we're we're seeing some of these event args for. Um, so you'll, you should see, I wonder where they're actually using this. Yeah, purchasing listener. So I would expect to see an event somewhere here that basically lets us um, subscribe to, to and actually see those event args being used. I'm not, it's not immediately obvious to me where that is right now, but that's that's the general idea. Um, so yeah, we've got you know that interface is there, purchasing services here, um, response receiver, like those kind of feel like the main components. There's a whole lot of internal namespaces here that uh, people who write Java libraries are are funny. Um, we see this a lot in, in Google stuff where they'll name something internal, uh, but it'll be like a, a public type. See so, yeah, how this is a public interface. I'm um, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. But see yeah, how this is a public interface, even though it's in the internal package name. Yeah, that's always fun. Um, they do that, and and you kind of have to gauge in your own binding whether that type is needed. Now, sometimes if I remove the binding for some of these types, um, if one of these other public types references that type and I've removed it, the generator won't know how to generate the the type that you actually want to have, and so you'll kind of you'll lose uh, types being generated when that starts happening. So sometimes it's a matter of um, we can't make private interfaces public or like interfaces in Java that are private. We can't mark them as public because ultimately in the glue code uh, for your, your Android app, when it gets generated, we can't, we generate some Java code. And if we try and use a private interface uh, in Java, it just, it won't let us. It's, it's not a, a valid set of Java code and then the Java compilation step will fail. Uh, but sometimes we've had in the past where we've had private classes in Java, and we actually mark them public uh, on the .NET side and the binding side so that we can actually access them. And that sometimes solves those cases where maybe purchasing service um, wanted, and, you know, has an, a method, maybe get product data actually returned a product builder. And this product builder is internal and we removed it. Well, then suddenly, if that was the case, get product data, wouldn't they wouldn't we wouldn't know how to generate it. Right. I, I hope that's kind of clear. Um, as with anything in Android bindings, nothing is super clear until you start kind of experiencing it yourself. Um, and if we look down at the different models, um, it looks like we're pretty good. We've got the, you know, I think we've got all those types there. So um, I think like right off the bat, we got lucky on this one. This one doesn't have a whole lot of changing that we need, but there are some changes we can make that are helpful and interesting. Like we said, um, this namespace, that kind of really sucks in .NET, and I don't want to see that as a .NET developer. So. 
I'm going to go ahead and change that right away. So one, one of the things we can do is we can come and take the different package names that we have. I'm, remind me somebody, if I forget, I'm missing an L on the end. I copied that. Uh, and we can come over to our metadata and we can start applying these rules. Now I'm going to write one of these rules and then we're going to kind of look and see how, how this exactly works. Um, so first of all, I need to specify the path. Uh, package name is this. Nobody reminded me I forgot the L. <laughs> um, so we have the package name. And then what we want to do is say for that particular, for this particular um, node, this element, we want to, the action we want to give it is to make the managed name. So this, the C sharp generated, the .NET generated name, we want to change that. And instead of com.amazon.device, blah, 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 we want to do amazon.device, actually, let me finish fixing how I type and maybe IAP like that. I don't know. Part of this is a little bit of an art of like what what's a name that's not terrible uh, given the input name. Um, so the, I did that for internal. I just want to make sure that this one actually existed, just the device to IAP, because we're going to do something different with internal in a second here. So now if I go and, and build this, do a rebuild quick. Uh, let me get rid of this assembly just so we can load up the new one when it's built. Did that work already? Nope, not yet. Get there. Now when we open that up, that whole namespace should be now changed to this instead. So the what it was doing was, you know, trying to uppercase those types for us at first. And um, that's fine in some cases, but it's just kind of ugly. Build, build, build. going on in the chat anything is everyone following along any any questions <laughs> i know this is we're getting into the weeds here well this is perfect though i mean uh i was just thinking to myself i'm so glad this is recorded um i know this is gonna be a great resource for people and uh, i was also looking to see how i can add markers so that once you got into the transform stuff yeah it's really easy to come back and find this i don't remember where that was so i'm just gonna open it from here all right so now if we look Yay! You know, it was renamed for us. So that's a more sensible name to actually consume as a, a user of the library. Now, we should probably get into, and this would be a good place for a mark, one of those markers, you know, how what's actually happening here, right? So that's that's kind of the important part. So the way the binding process generally works is you give it a jar file. It's going to basically dump out a whole bunch of different information about the APIs in that jar file into an XML format. And if we look down in here, if you take a look, I'm in, I'm in the object folder, the, the debug, you know, the target framework that I'm on. And then we've got these different API XML files. And now I'm going to forget the order of, of these that are, are listed, but generally you can come into the API.xml. And this is sort of an XML representation of the APIs in that jar file. So if we look at, um, let's find one of the easy types purchasing service. So let's go find name equals purchasing service. So this is probably our class name here. Yep. So you can see the XML for this class. Um, and you know, they're, they're just giving you some information about it. It extends Java language object. Um, the name is purchasing service. It's not static. The visibility is public. Uh, and so we basically have just dumped out what's the API information. That's that's all it really is. Um, we've got the JNI signatures of things, and then if you look at the actual methods, you know you've got the name of the method here and um, the different parameters in here. So there's a, a, a set of strings and you know a bunch of other stuff. So what we're doing here, we get this API XML file, and as part of the binding process, we have an opportunity to sort of augment or change this XML file before it gets used to actually create the C-sharp code. Um, and that's what this metadata file is for. That's what this metadata XML file is for. And what we're doing in this file is basically giving it a XPath path, which is what this is. So we're saying, um, if we come back to, let me open this permanently here. If we come back to the top here, you know, the root element is API, and then we've got different package names. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, give me under the API uh, node, give me any package name 
or any package node with a name that equals this. And that's what I want to perform this action on. And, and so the action that I'm performing on it is change its, its managed name to this instead, instead of the default auto-generated one. So once you kind of understand that, that flow and how that process works and that you're dealing with XPath here, first of all, um, it's a lot simpler to kind of understand what's happening. It's not all just magic. Um, so hopefully that, that kind of explains the process a little bit better. Um, so I have a question about the, the name changing itself. Oh, hey, yeah. Code Rushed is raiding with a party of 14. We've been what? raided twice. What's going on? So welcome, everybody. We are talking about creating C-sharp bindings for a Java library. In this case, it's the Amazon Fire OS Store SDK thingamabob. <laughs> yeah, that thing. <laughs> that thing. So, so my question is, uh, you've changed this name, but now, since you've changed the name, is that going to make it harder for me to reference the original documentation that's Java-based? Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what I was kind of saying before. It's like it's a little bit of an art to kind of pick a good name for it. So you notice here that really all I did was take off the com dot part, right? Um, that's like a normal convention in Java, but like when you see that in C sharp, I don't I don't know about everyone else, but like I'm just kind of like you know like you, uh, I don't like that. Uh, I don't want to type com dot whatever. Like it's obvious it's it's either going to be com or org or whatever. Um, so. Often when you're changing namespaces, you're just like, okay, let's take off the ugly Java bits and make it more .NET friendly. Um, so that's, yeah, that, I mean, that's a great point. And, and I think when you do that, though, the documentation is less unclear, especially when you've got IntelliSense and you start typing in your editor and you're like, oh, uh, Amazon, and it just you know, magically knows what you want to type. So, so. so changing a, a namespace like that is perhaps a little bit... Uh, more forgiving and uh, changing the actual name of a class. Yeah. Problem, right? Yeah. So we've done that in the past. So one of the other things, if you consider a case where, so if Java, it's like com dot company dot. Um, so here's like the package name, right? And it's, and let's say it's widget. Right, that they have a class library for a bunch of widgets. Well, now if, if in Java they have a, a class under there, usually the class name is widget with a capital W. Well, anyone who's done .NET probably has encountered if I have namespace company dot widget, if I start doing you know class uh, widget, you .NET doesn't really like that. So. Um, there's been some times where we've kind of massaged names um, to kind of suit that scenario better. I think one of the classic ones is probably in core Android itself. I think technically it's um, Android dot something. Nah, I forget the names of it now, but like Android dot dot view dot view, I believe. And I think for our bindings, we have Android dot views dot view. Yeah. Um, so you know, we'll do things subtly like that if we have to, or. You know, another example in a in a Java class, you you could have a um, like a field that you um, Java something. You could have a field um, and then you could have a you know a, a void and or something like that. And when we start kind of changing names around, like we don't generally do. Um, fields like that in C-sharp either. Um, so we might have, and the, so the C-sharp method would be void blah, because we like our, our casing differently. But we'd also have a field like that, right? Like that would be what our generator does by default. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have a collision, because those obviously can't both be the same name. So there's some cases when we're doing bindings that you generally have to kind of use a bit of your judgment and, and do the kind of the right thing. And so to correct all of those or to make make design decisions essentially it's this metadata file where yeah. we're going to do all that work yeah exactly okay. so let's let's take a look at another thing so like we, we we have a binding that functions now we probably should fix these names these namespaces and stuff too right so let's go do the model one quick because that's that's a pretty much an easy copy paste right there all we have to do is come here and say oh, actually for that package name we want it to be this namespace name now we talked a bit about like internal stuff, and there's nothing really wrong with exposing these um, in .NET. It's just kind of like I don't really want to see that there necessarily. It's something that an, an API that you're not really meant to to work with, so why expose it in the first place? 
So what we could do in this case is we could start getting rid of some of these, right? We can we can do that. So uh, the way to do that is to use a remove node. So this this attribute uh, name is kind of more like give me a path to something and perform some action on it. Um, I guess they could have done this by making the action, you know, remove or something like that, but they didn't. Um, so we have this remove node, and it's kind of the same syntax. Um, so we could say uh, we can make the path. Uh, we could do this for each one of these items. Um, what were the names of them again? Internal dot model, uh, internal dot util. So we could do that, and this would work. This would remove that one, and we could copy and paste that again and change it up for that. But one of the cool things about this is like remember, we are working with XPath, so we have some more utilities at our disposal to kind of make the, our transforms a little bit more clean. Um, and one of those is we can use the contains function. Um, so we can say if the name contains, uh, I, I don't think, uh, have we, there's not really a start, we're using like XPath 1, I think, still. So you don't have as much at your disposal as you might in, in a newer version of XPath, but we can still do some interesting things. So now we can say, like, if the name contains this internal namespace, just remove it. And that's going to just match everything in that XML document. Um, so why don't we go ahead and build this and see if that works. And you can get into some pretty complicated XPath statements. Um, you know, we've done that for a lot of things where you can make changes, kind of big, big sweeping changes with a simple statement rather than having to write, you know, the same thing over and over again, which is helpful. How uh, how big is this SDK? Uh, like what? Define big, like jar size. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, well, I mean, in terms of like, okay, that didn't take terribly long to build. Yeah. I'm so just I mean, curious how this rates against other libraries. And... The the API surface is is pretty small, so um, it's you know there's there's only a handful of types and oh look at that it actually updated for, oh no it didn't update for me yeah there's there's not a lot especially once you consider that we just removed all of these different uh, internal namespaces. Um, and now these things are funny. For some reason, the decompiler is taking, making funny names with these things, but those don't actually, those are different package names. But yeah, like most of those are internal. Um, there's only a, what, what did we say? Four plus another dozen classes or so. Yeah, it's, it's pretty small. This one's pretty small. So it, this one's would be generally on the easier side. Now, where it gets really tricky, um, and, and one of the things that we can, I can kind of show you quickly too, is when you start having all sorts of dependencies in things. So um, I recently did was working on the, the Fabric, I, I think I can talk about this, it's yeah. all open, the Fabric UI stuff, uh, bindings for Android. Uh, so there's Fabric UI office bindings. And if you started looking at the, the dependency chain for it, you know, we quickly found that, oh, it has a, a bunch of different dependencies. Um, oh, that's not the one I want. And because it has dependencies, you have to go do bindings for those, and then you have to search, do those dependencies have their own dependencies, and do those dependencies have their own dependencies, and you start kind of walking down this trail of it gets really complicated really fast and, and for us, what you think might be a simple library if they used a whole bunch of different dependency chains. Um, so I think... Um, the, the actual Fabric UI one isn't in here, but I think that one of the main dependencies is, so you saw me kind of, if you joined earlier, you might have seen me going through the, the repo for the binding for this uh, 3, 310 ABP, this Jake Wharton library. So the Office Fabric UI thing depends on a version of this guy. Um, so if we just kind of go through Maven and take a look at it, now I think I, I don't remember which version, I think I did the, uh, I think I did this version. If I didn't, it would be close enough. Now, you can start to see, okay, so for this guy, we start looking down at the, this is the, um, I think this is the, is this the Palm file or the Maven metadata file? I forget which one. One of the files tells you what dependencies the thing has. So if you look at this, this thing has a dependency um, on this 310 BP. So this is 310 ABP. It depends on 310 BP. And it depends on a specific classifier of it and the scope. If the scope is compiled, generally that means you, you need to have it in your dependency chain as well. Sometimes you'll see libraries with dependencies where their scope is test. Uh, and generally you don't need to include those ones. 
So you start kind of walking down this chain of like, okay, I see this one. Now if I search for this guy, you know, does this one have dependencies too? And um, so we, we go down. Now yeah, let's just look for the dependency node. That's not, yeah, there we go. So this one, I don't re recall off. Oh, this is this is for a plugin. Like these get tricky too, because you have to start kind of seeing, oh, this is a plugin for Gradle that has a dependency on this or something like that. It's not the actual um, dependency of the library itself. Mm. I think I recall this one doesn't actually have its own dependencies that are, oh, so here's the, the true dependency section. And you can see here, right, scope is test, don't care about that. Um, and that's all there was. So this wasn't too bad. It was only Office UI Fabric, which depended on it, uh, 310 APP, which depended on 310 BP. Mm -hmm. But you can quickly see that that kind of gets out of control pretty fast if there's a lot of different um, things in the chain. Nice. I had no idea. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a, well, <laughs> Uh, I, so I made this little tool. Um, this is kind of less useful for the public, more useful for our own internal purposes. I don't know why that's looking like that. Um, eventually, I want to update it. This is all on my, my GitHub uh, repo too. But basically, it's it's loading here. Give it a second. This lets us see the kind of the Google Maven repository. Um, so when we look at something like, let's do Play Services because they're pretty wild. When we look at something like Play Services. Mm, let's look at maps even. Maps is a good one. Everyone likes maps. If I pick the latest version of maps, this is a really ghetto Xamarin Forms app, by the way, but it really does work. Um, if I look at the dependency tree, it gets pretty wild pretty quickly, right? So we've got, you know, this thing depends on play services base, which depends on basement, which depends on v4, which depends on compat, which depends on annotations. And like, it's just, it it becomes... It becomes interesting very quickly. That's so you kind of this is why it's a full time job. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is this is why you kind of hope when you're finding something that you want to buy and you think like, okay, the first thing you should probably do is look at try and figure out what the dependency chain is and like write it all down and make sure that you understand it because what you'll start seeing too is like um, tasks itself. If I was to navigate to that item, it depends on a lot of the same things that. The other thing does, but it might have its own set of dependencies. I don't, I don't even remember, to be honest. Uh, it looks like it's pretty much the same. I think some different support dependencies it brings in. Um, so you kind of have to do like your own like calculation of what all those dependencies are. Now, having said that, you can see here in my, my local version that I, I do have plans to add some Maven uh, central support too, and that might help some people out as well. But uh, mm. it's one of those spare time projects that I never seem to find time to do. Well, I've linked to this repo uh, in the chat, so if anybody wants to or find things that would be useful for them, they can go grab it. Yeah, or, or wants to send pull requests. I mean, right? It's open <laughs> source. That's, yeah, that's right. All right, so uh, let's see if we can get somewhat back on track here. So we've got you know this in-app purchasing um, thing created, right? Um, we could start to, to add samples if we wanted to. Let's just do a, a simple app. Uh, put that in a folder. And let's make a Android. I already have an Android app. That's that's handy there. I could have just clicked that. See, I'm so used to old old way of doing things, right? I'm just gonna call it IAP sample. And let's do. I like blank apps. That's my happy place. Android five. Yeah, that's a pretty low target. I don't know. That's another good point. Like we should probably almost have gone back to the SDK here and seeing if they have any run folder and see if they have any documentation around like what the minimum version is. Um, Cause fire OS is, is based on Android, but they've got their own set of, um, you know, different API levels as it were. So 1.0 was really old. Um, please use for any new updates and builds. I guess they have so a link to some documentation here. So we can take a look at that. Nathaniel's asking a question. When importing yeah. the bindings into the Xamarin Android project, does it cause any issues with the linker or ProGuard rules? Importing bindings into Pro um, So potentially. Um, so this is where you'll start to see a lot of um, a lot of AAR files come into play when that kind of thing happens. And and one of those is like, let, here, let me just go grab a 
uh, Google thing. Let me get a Google AAR file here because I think we'll be able to show you some of this. Um, I like this one. Probably cast, if I had to guess, is going to have something here. So let's go download the AAR file. I'm just going to put that in my downloads. And let's find that. So if you extract this guy, if you just extract the AR file, it's just a big zip file. And you'll start to see here, uh, this one doesn't have a ProGuard config. But what you can see here sometimes is the, is a ProGuard config file, or ProGuard.txt file, I think it usually is. And so when that happens, the, the whole build process is supposed to consider the ProGuard config rules from those AAR files. So it's kind of like each library is up it's up to them to manage what those rules need to be for their own library. And those get all merged together when your app is actually run through ProGuard or, uh, you know, the new the new hotness that's uh, coming out, the, the R8D8 stuff. I forget which is which always. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the idea. Um, that should kind of handle its own thing. And so if you're doing if you're doing bindings, I mean, if you're just including the AR file in your binding, that should kind of automatically flow through. If you're um, doing a jar file and they have some kind of documentation about ProGuard rules somewhere, you might want to follow that too. Um, the other part of this is like the Android manifest uh, can be in these files as well. And these are supposed to get merged into the overall app manifest. Um, but you'll see, and if, if I don't know that we're going to get to doing the all of the bindings by any means today, um, one of them, I think, if I remember correctly, has a bunch of stuff in the in the manifest that needs setting up. So you can, you kind of have to take that into account too. Now, the unfortunate thing is we don't, in Xamarin and Android, we don't do full proper merges of manifest um, at this point. There's some corner cases that don't quite merge the same. So you'd have to either like add documentation um, in a readme file or something and say to your users who are consuming the library and say, hey, um, you know, you need to go do this and this and this in your, in your Android manifest by yourself. Uh, or sometimes there's ways that you can add C sharp attributes to cause those uh, manifest things to happen. Um, so there's a few different ways of doing that, but uh, hopefully that was a long-winded answer to your question. But yeah, <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> All right, so we've got this uh, project here. I don't know why I've got squigglies everywhere, to be honest. Um, but we should be able to add reference to our binding project. And when we do that, oh, now my squigglies are gone magically. That's that's useful. All right, so now we would start to be able to do some of these things, right? We'd be able to say um, Amazon.device.iap, and we can say purchasing service. And I think there's some static methods on here. So, yeah, we can kind of invoke, like, uh, well, we could register a listener, and but we have to give it a context. Now, you notice here these parameter names are kind of ugly. Um, we'll get to that in a second. There's some ways to fix that, to clean that up. But the context will be this. And if I implement this interface in this class, I can just do the same thing there. Um, Amazon.viceip. So we can implement this. And I don't know what all comes in here, but we'll, we'll find out. All right, we've got, yeah, question. Yeah, question from when, when you have a chance. Yeah, when I had a method that is a callback, which also has a proper event generated, I want to remove the callback method since it does not have the same event. But when I do that, it won't compile because of the generated event. Oh, man, you're getting really into the weird weeds here, too. Um, uh, that is a good question. I, I'm not sure I fully understand it. Um, or event generated. Yeah, we can talk later. That'd probably be a good. It, it'd be good if you had like an example that we could, you know, sit in front of and, and take a look at. Um, that's usually the unfortunate reality when it comes to Android binding. It's like, well, if I could see the code, it might be easier to answer. Uh, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, on on product data response. So I'm assuming if we do a request, we'll get that on purchase response. You know, purchase updates response. I mean, we implement all the methods here. And uh, we should be able to just kind of do what we need to do. And then I think it's as simple as uh, calling get product data, which would give you a bunch of different products. I think you have to give it a, a list of 
I think you have to give it a list of your product identifiers. So if, if you've registered, um, um, you know, a product called Pro, you want users to upgrade to Pro, you could do that. And I think the intention here is that your response here will be, let's rename that. Your response will be the actual request status. And is there anything else? Yeah, product data. So it gives you a list of all your, a dictionary of your products. So. Um, their their API looks pretty simple. So now, I mean, we have a binding. We we can uh, you know we could roll with it and start building our app around it. So you're confident that the work you've done <clears> this <throat> far that that you're going to call into that binding or into that library and it's going to give you the expected result. Yeah. So that's that's a really good question, and we get a that lot wasn't of my experience the last time I did it. <laughs> like I got the successful binding right, and then I went into my project to use it. Now, granted, my binding was written by um, not Amazon, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, I didn't, I didn't actually have confidence that the original code was good either, right? So, I had doubts yeah. all yeah. down the chain. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, it's nice to yeah. know that you seem to have confidence. Yeah, I mean, so that's that's kind of an interesting thing, and like we get that question a lot when so when we when we're doing like um, Android support libraries or play services and Firebase. And we put out like a preview release. Um, I, I'd be curious to see what what that act one at was actually for you, David. Like, because be, usually if it builds and it doesn't crash at, I mean, it shouldn't crash at runtime. Um, that's always, that's always a, a remote possibility. But even that is kind of like if it builds, it's probably going to work uh, when it comes to bindings. Because I mean, it's it's kind of simple. If we look at the actual code that gets generated for it. Um, you know, it's it's C sharp compiled code, and then in your app, it's it, that plus the Java code. So if I look at uh, purchasing service, we can actually come in here and see what the generator has done for us. And so um, let's get go down to like a method here. Get product data. This is a good one to look at. So you can see where you know the, the name of the method, the JNI signature. And so, like, if these two things are correct, you're probably not going to really have a problem. And they should be correct unless you've kind of changed things um, with the metadata rules uh, or the generator hasn't deduced it correctly. But that's that's really quite odd anymore, especially now that we have the, the class parse version of kind of getting that, that in API information. Um, so yeah, back, you know what I was saying about like Android support and play services and stuff. We have these previews that we put out, and we get a lot of questions like, well, how how confident should I be that these will work right? And it's kind of like, well, if you if you build your app with it, it compiles, and if you know you test it, like it it works. It, it a binding is a binding is a binding. It's calling into a native API. If the native API works, it should pretty much work. There have been probably. And only as many cases as I could count on one hand of times where we've had errors, uh, you know, problems with um, like Android support libraries or anything at runtime due to a binding error or a binding issue. So it's it's pretty rare. So what I kind of like to tell people is the reason that we mark them as like preview or pre-release is because we want the right to mess up a bit on the C-sharp API or regress on that API without, you know, somebody pulling in that code into their production code and us saying, oh yeah, we, we it's good, we have no regressions, we're all fine. Um, so what happens sometimes with these like P0s and things like that, um, most of the time that, that doesn't really matter, but there, there's an odd time where on an interface method, the interface method is what's used to kind of extract the event args. So I bet you if we look, let's pull up one of these, if we look at the output, um, find the correct window here, if we look at the output of the actual uh, event args that have been created in here, so we had some of these. Yeah, do you see how there's a property named P0? So the reason that's named P0 is we, we when we're binding this thing, we don't have, we didn't get any data from the jar file if we look back at it that tells us what the parameter uh, name is. Now, you'll see in here it has one because this JADX is kind of smart enough to say, I don't know what the, the parameter name is. I'm just going to take the type name and change the case of it and make that the parameter name. Um, and arguably, we, we maybe should do that in some cases too. Um, but the the problem is when you have stuff like this where you have that P0 in the 
sorry, let me find the. So this is the the method that the thing was generated from, right? The interface method that the event was generated from and that the event args were generated from. So all our generator is doing is saying, well, I'm going to create an event arg and I'm just going to have the property of the event arg be the parameter name for the method that it's kind of mirroring. And what we'll, we'll do often, like when we try and bind these support libraries and, and in uh, play services, users generally don't like seeing a lot of P0s, especially on event args. Like if you register an event and, and you're like, oh, product data response, um, I wonder how I get the product data. P0, that's super obvious, right? Um, so we we generally try and like name these better. And to do that with such a massive library like Android Supporter Play Services, we're generally using like Google's documentation or um, now they've started with Android X, they've started shipping um, uh, sources jar files which have that information in it that we can extract from. Um, so it's a little bit better. But what used to happen in the past is we would scrape like their their documentation to get this information out. And if they change the format of something, uh, maybe our scraper didn't pick up a certain case and we used to have the right parameter name for this, but then it changed uh, and we can't find it anymore. And so we generated a new set of bindings and suddenly this thing used to be called product data, but now it's called P0. And that, you know, that kind of breaks your code if you're relying on it. So really long story short, we, we generally try to say like it's a preview until we've kind of vetted as much uh, that we can that there's no significant regressions in the actual C Sharp API. It's less about that we're concerned that the binding works or not. Uh, it's more about the API. Yeah, gotcha. All right, so only, yeah, only, only way I found was generating binds for both libraries. Yeah, so that's another kind of interesting thing and, and we have a better way of doing it. So I think what, what um, Dot Morton is talking about perhaps is if you have um, multiple AAR files. So if you have multiple jar files, we can include multiple ones of those in the same project, in the same binding project. So I could go in here and I could say, you know, we have this one jar file, but you know, I want to put all of, I want to put the device uh, or let's say the Amazon Maps. I don't know what it's called. We don't have it out here yet, but let's just do it for illustration purposes. I could do that. I can do that with multiple jar files. Now, with AAR files, if we look at, um, let's crack open that file spy again. Because I think I've still got an instance of, oh, maybe I don't anymore. I had the, uh, let's go back to the downloads and grab. Oh, it was just the AAR file. I see. Anyway, if you look at the the binding for one of these guys, no, let's 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 do it because I think that's actually maybe kind of important. Let's download play services basement. Another super handy tool if you don't have it already is the uh, NuGet package explorer. This is actually one thing coming over from Mac and, and doing Windows that I've really uh, enjoyed having. So. Uh, if we look at the library for it, uh, is this going to be a bad example too? Probably. Well, this will be a good example of how you can do it going forward if it's not a bad example. Okay, notes. So this is what happens. So if you have a library project, or sorry, if you have an AAR file, we bind that as a, let me go back over here. We bind that as a library project zip build type. What happens right now for historic reasons is that that, AR file gets saved as a resource with this exact name. And because it uses this exact name, we never it was never set up to allow for multiple AR files in one library. I think it's one of those cases of like, you know, who could ever need more than, you know, however many kilobytes of memory or whatever, right? <laughs> like who would ever have more than one AR file in a binding project? So um, that's the reason that you can't have multiple ones in one binding project. You can certainly do multiple binding projects and stick one in each. Um, we have a, another thing. I think it already exists in stable release. I think it's Android AR library. And that is meant to take an AR file, but the trick with that one is it won't embed it in your DLL for you. So I'm jumping all over the map here. Hopefully this isn't going too crazy paste for people, but um, I'll show you an example of what we just did. I think the pull request is still open that I've been working on. Um, embed jar files in, in NuGet not inside DLL. So that's one thing that we wanted to do. Um, and we can also do that for AAR files. So what happens is 
you let's take a look at the file for one of these um, so if you if you're following along and you're asking about android x and you want to know about android x we are working on it we have a branch here you can go check it out uh, and this is what i was talking about earlier with our binderator so we actually have these razor templates that um, actually it's in the targets file so what we're doing now, if, if you want to have multiple AAR files in a single binding library, you can use this Android AAR library, and you can point it at the AAR file. But the trick is, like I said, this doesn't get embedded. Um, you would actually have to bundle this inside your NuGet package, which is what we're doing here. And if it's in your NuGet package, um, then you can just simply say, oh, include this Android AAR library. Now, on the flip side of that, to actually get that to, to bind in your project, you have to have uh, that AAR library somewhere extracted on your system, and you have to do an input jar uh, item type. And if you joined earlier, the input jar is different in the, in, than the embedded jar in that it exposes and creates c -sharp bindings for that jar file, but it doesn't include it in the DLL. So that's kind of a, a tricky way to, to kind of say, make the bindings for this, and I can make a whole bunch in one binding project. And then I can basically say include all the AAR files in the, the NuGet package. Yep, exactly. Include it, but don't include it. And we used that trick back in the day too. And and there's some some interesting things you can do once you kind of understand the different um, build actions and um, what you know. You start getting into to doing some fun MS build stuff too, and that's uh, that's a whole other world and a, probably a whole other stream that we could do. So. Um, yeah, that's that's in-app purchasing. Like I said, I think we could probably run that and would work. the The tricky thing is testing that on an emulator right now is not really the easiest thing to do. So, um, you know, we could continue on with another binding if you like. I'm, I'm curious if if anyone has questions or anything that they want to see more of in particular, or or more depth in this binding, even if there's some particular question. Yeah. Well, let, let's give people a minute to uh, see yeah. if they have questions that they want to ask. Um, whoop. Hey, look, I exist. And you got really, really, you're, you're taking over the screen, man. Yeah. Um, so like from, from your standpoint, like where, where do you go from here? You, you've created a couple of transforms in the metadata. Uh, yep. You would just continue down that path. Yeah. So until you've got, you know, your, your, if you, we come back to our DLL here. Until we're kind of happy with this, that's what I would keep doing. I'd keep going down that route. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with this at this point. The next step would be, um, you know, we, we actually want to package this thing up potentially into a, a NuGet package, so I could do that. Um, I think even the way that we've got it, I don't, I'm sure there's a way to do it in VS, but I'm not sure exactly how I do it there. So let's go... Uh, what did I name it? Xamarin Amazon. Nope. I'm not going to tab through them all because I'm not sure what's all there, but let's do uh, Xamarin Android Amazon. So we could probably at this point do um, an MS build pack. Uh, Did it get nested in another folder? That's annoying. Oh, I didn't. Did I not save the solution file? <laughs> oh, it's a, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure where my solution file went off to, but we can just do it on the CS project too. Um, so we could do you know MS build pack. And that should give us a, a new get package when we're all said and done. Yay, new get package. So yeah, that's that's. I mean, we could host that up somewhere if we wanted to, and then start using it in our app. Um, so that, I think the next step that I would do probably here too is try and um, build out the you know the CI infrastructure around it. So. Uh, whether that be DevOps or um, whatever you want to use, uh, have something that's a, a repeatable build. Um, I don't know. Should I toss this code kind of as is up on NuGet? Um, we could do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if that's uh, if you think it's uh, in, in 
you know, shape to start testing and surfacing any of the problems. Um, or if you want to work on more transforms. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, so it's, I mean, let's, this is, this is uh, also Android only, right? So is there an iOS yeah. component to this as well that you would end up adding? So they have, I think they do have a, a login SDK for iOS. Um, I'm not super uh, confident in jumping into that one right now, but um, yeah. we could definitely we could definitely add another you know another binding to one of the existing uh, the more interesting ones. I think like Maps is kind of interesting. Or let me uh, yeah, log login is kind of interesting. Map, maps is probably uh, the, the hard thing about these things too is like it's not that easy to test them. Um, and that's that's just kind of like what bindings is in general. I feel like there's a lot of of, of cases where it's kind of difficult to to test things without having like API keys set up and all that thing. In this case, you know, without having an actual Fire OS device sitting in front of you, it's not super easy to test. Um, I think Cloud Drive was kind of interesting and might have some some curious uh, binding problems, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, let's do Cloud Drive. I think they've got some kind of um, trickier problems to solve from like a metadata perspective because I think that's that's another spot that I, a lot of users kind of um, struggle with, right? Like you you see a certain error and it's like, well, how do I how do I actually approach correcting that? So let's do that. Cool. Yeah. All right. So you know my love of the copy pasta. <laughs> um, what do we, what do we do in cloud? Did I say cloud drive? Start that guy up. I like to clear out some of the old junk, and we'll probably. Oh, I'm I'm super. I'm get, not gonna lie. I'm super tempted. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> well, you gotta redeem yourself since last time it didn't go well. That's right. Well, I think I think you know we're there. We'll get it. All right. I don't remember what the version of this one is. I'm just gonna do one for now, uh, and then we got to get the path to the actual cloud drive bits. If I can, let's close some junk here that I don't need anymore, so I'm not floundering quite as badly. All right, so this is another jar. We've got all the jars, and. The actual file name going here. Ah. I wish that there was a, uh, a simpler way than like the, the slow. Like, I don't think there's a keyboard shortcut to do like a rename, is there? The Mac is always just enter, right? You just like enter, boom. Sad. All right. Oh, look at that. One, it is one. Oh, that's amazing. I just knew it. This name doesn't really matter here. This is just what shows up in the IDE, so it's cool. We're just linking in um, this actual item so it shows up in the IDE. If you didn't, don't remember that from last time. Uh, let's do the actual embedded jar as well. I'm not doing the MS build extras thing again. I'm going to leave that. All right. I think this project is probably safe to open now in the IDE. Um, let's give it a shot. So in this case, I mean, come on, Dave, you got to admit that the copy paste was a better way, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm all about copying and pasting. I don't like to write things over and over and over again. If exactly. I know I've done it before, I just pick a starting point. When I do a file new for any new project, I go for the one that has all the code in it, and I'm more than happy to start removing a few things. Yeah. But I am, all right, I so am, let's... I am alone on that, I think. I, I got uh, not yelled at. There's some folks on on the Twitters. Did you see the essentials conversation about should essentials no, be I didn't. a template or not? Yeah. Oh, maybe I saw part of that. Yeah. So there's a question. Ooh, F2 is F2 the way that you do the uh, quick rename? Is it? I. You know what? I think the problem is like I use I, I mostly use a Surface Book too, and if I don't have the function key enabled, it's brightness. Right. And right. so, but hold on. I don't think. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I I don't know maybe I'm I'm too inept I I think it's the same problem on on my uh, yeah on my main keyboard I have like the yeah it is F two okay nice. it's F two as long as I want to toggle the function Ooh. key Clifford off and says on says Control R twice in Explorer no. though Clifford no nah, not doing it for me 
I wish. That would be handy. <laughs> Learning with those shortcuts with John and Dave. Um, so we've got we've got a bunch of stuff in this guy, right? Like there's there's some there's some types. Woo, woo baby. I don't know what this business is about. Like there, I I don't I, I mean Java's fine, it, it, but like I they, I see some when you do bindings, you see some just really weird stuff, really weird choices that they make, um, and it, it always leaves me confused. Like what what what's this? What's going on here? Huh? Um, anyway. Got a lot of types, so like let's just kind of let's let me rename one of them just for good measure because I've got that rule in there. I don't like like deleting everything out of here because I, I always forget the boilerplate and then I have to go back and find it again. So we're just gonna do that. So let's see what happens, right? I'm gonna build. Let me see what happens. See how many how much pain we get. Ah. Yeah. So this this is more like what the typical experience might look like. Um, you started us off easy with the other one, no? Errors. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta get so you are into these, it. Are these forty three true errors, or is there like two errors and the rest are just kind of? Yeah, uh, so that that's kind of the interesting thing. Um, well, and there's a number of ways to approach this too, right? So like one of the things that you can start looking at, like there's a lot of a lot of these errors are in um, if we look at the file. They're in the model namespace. Um, so like one thing you might be able to do, it depends on what, what you actually, so this is bringing me right to the error, right? So this is, this is kind of saying like, oh, um, you don't implement this interface member uh, compared to. Now, what some of these are, let's just take a look. Let's see if there's a compare to method here. Because often there is. And if we kind of look at, um, <clears throat> okay, so here's a method. So first question is kind of like, well, why, why do we get this error? We implement compared to, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if we look at the signature of this method, do you see how it takes a, a iCloud drive response mm -hmm. type as the parameter? Well, if we look really closely um, at this error message, it's saying, no, iComparable should be compared to an object, right? Mm -hmm. So the the case is here that it's just basically doing the wrong thing in terms of the type like it, in a way it's it's too bad because it would be nicer to have that um that actual type of what we're comparing there in the method um, but one of the things that we can do here is we can say well okay um if that's the case i can change this signature with some metadata uh, i can fix that so let's let's just try and go that approach uh, so let me find that method again um, so the easiest way, and, and what I love here, is that we do emit the, this comment here. So one really easy trick is to say, okay, uh, yep, give me that path. I don't want to type that out. Um, and that's the path to, to the actual metadata for this method. So if we come back to our correct metadata file, and we do something like paste that attribute path in there, um, this is going to give us like a really, and like when we generate these, we do like really super detailed, accurate, like make sure every parameter type is exactly what it's supposed to be to match up. Now you could get away with a more lax rule by saying like, oh, just give me, um, you know, any compared to method that has one parameter uh, and we could end it there and, and probably that would be okay, but maybe it would match too many. I don't know. Um, so I always just generally leave the, the super high accuracy um, path xpath query in there so now what we can do here is we can say okay i think returning an int is fine um, but that first parameter this type well we we want to change that and now we don't th there's a couple places that you can kind of change things in bindings we could say make it the um uh is it, i think a java type i forget the name of it I, I don't do this one often or no it's just type so we can say change the type so if you think about it again like it's xpath being applied to the XML that was generated. Now, if, you, if I'm going to go look at this again, just in case you've joined more recently before we did this. Um, but basically, yeah, in the bin debug mono Android 8.1, there's this API XML file. And so we could find this, um, I don't remember what the type was here. We could find the type and basically it would tell us where's the, where's the class. It'll tell us, okay, the type, where's the type? 
We have extends, deprecated abstract. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm thinking of the method. That's why. So we have a parameter, and the, the type is this. So remember, we're just changing, we're just like augmenting this API XML definition with our own metadata file. So we could go in and we could say, well, make the type um, java.lang.object. And that might do it, but then again, Java might complain when we go to generate the, the Java, the Android compilable wrappers uh, in an actual application. That's totally possible that, that it doesn't like that. So one kind of trick that I like to use is instead of trying to trick the underlying Java type to change, um, uh, sorry, manage type, and this will just generate a different type for the actual binding. Uh, so in this case, Java Lang object with capitals because this is the .NET, the C sharp type that we're changing. Um, so let's give this a whirl. Let's let's just try and build this and see if our error count goes down. So like this is kind of the the life of a, a binding creator is like taking a look at this error list and and just waiting and praying and seeing like I've got 43. Is it going to go down to 42? Right. Uh, so we'll see. Let's let's take while we're looking at this. Let's see what some of the other errors are. Um, because, so this one's going to be interesting. Doesn't have a return matching return type of I list. Oh, that one's one of a a few that's kind of a nightmare. Now it's a build failed. I wonder if sometimes, you know, we've done a lot of work uh, on the the Android team to deal with like bin and object folder not needing to be blown away and rebuilt. Unfortunately, bindings have kind of lagged a little bit behind. Sometimes you'll find that things are stale and you'll have to do a rebuild to get it to actually consider your changes. Um, that's something that, that we're working on that we're reporting more of too. I should probably report that one. Um, so this is, yeah, this is where most of our errors are. Now, the fun part with bindings is we could get through all these 43 errors and like 10 more would pop up. So it's, it's, it's kind of like how far does the generator get? And like once you fix some of these things, some of the types that it's skipping because these types don't exist because there's an error binding them, that makes it surface more errors, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so this didn't actually fix it. So let's see. We might need to go figure out what... Um, so iCloud drive request. So one of the, the ways that you can go about this, and this is part of why I've been used to... Um, sometimes working in VS Code is because I like to dig into the actual generated files for other stuff. So if I look at, we're still getting this error, and well, you know, it doesn't com implement the compare to, but I want to see what the actual signature of that I comparable compare to is because I, I guessed and I, I think I got it wrong. Um, so we don't directly implement that interface, so I'm assuming this iCloud drive request probably implements that interface. Um, so cloud model, let's scroll down until we find the, the actual type for it. Yeah, so this one implements the Java Lang uh, comparable. And if I look at this definition, it is int and compared to, is this a Java Lang object? Okay, it is. So let's go back and see. I'm not sure why that didn't actually help us fulfill that. Um, let's go back here and find that method again and see what what it generated, right? Because we changed something. So either it, it changed the generated output or it didn't. And it looks like for whatever reason it failed to do that. Oh, I think I know why. Um, so I gave you the wrong, the wrong API XML, uh, like the wrong path. So this thing here that I copied and pasted, mm -hmm. that is for the method, right? That points to the method element in the XML. What we actually are trying to do is influence the parameter element within that method element. So that was the mistake that I made. So what we need to do is take this. So if, if we just assume that this whole XPath query here shows you know, the path to the, the actual method, now we want to change the parameter, the manage type of the parameter. So we can say, OK, we're in that method. So give me the first parameter in that method instead and change the manage type of it to Java Lang object, which is what I, I had originally intended, but messed up, obviously. Um, and remember that uh, in XPath, the arrays are um, one index based, so not zero. I always have to consider that when I'm doing this or forget it and fix it after I realize that I forgot it. So I'm going to try just doing a, a normal build. Let's see if that actually takes our change. Well, the good news is if you do have to file an issue, uh, we have a video.
Yeah, true. There you go. <laughs> just put that. Just put that in. Yeah. So forty-two. We're down some. Um, so you know, we could start knocking these out, right? We could start going through the list and, and knocking them all out and doing it that way. Um, that seems kind of tedious. So usually, like any programmer, uh, I'm I'm more inclined to try and um, find a way to to do less work, even if it ends up taking more time, right? We we all kind of do that. So one way that we can do this is um, we can write some XPath, that, some fancy XPath that'll do it. So let's start at the beginning of it. Um, for In the app API thing, we, we can say we want any, well, really, we want any package name. But let's, let's keep it narrowed down to model for now, just, just in case we influence too much stuff. Um, and this really will apply to any class, not just the one that's given that name. Uh, but it still applies to the method named compare to and with one parameter type. Now, the difference being probably the parameter type is not always going to be cloud drive response. I'm guessing. It might be, but I'm guessing it won't be. So let's let's try this. Let's get rid of that. And then we're still saying, you know, parameter one of those methods, change it to Java Lang object. So I do I have too many? I think I have too many braces there. Uh, yep, I think that's good. Yeah, you don't get any good uh, syntax handling out of that stuff. No, unfortunately not so much. XPath within an XML. I mean, it's all XML highlighted, but this is kind of special uh, special XML. Isn't all XML special? Yeah, yes, exactly. All right, so let's see. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. Let's see if we knock a few of these down. <laughs> now, another approach that we sometimes take, um, and this is like the set everything on fire approach, um, but sometimes it works, is like, okay, if I look at this this model package, um, do I need all these classes in C-sharp? You know, like if, if I start looking at the API and I decide, you know what, um, I'm never calling this. I'm never calling any of these. Maybe these are all kind of like not internal types, but like you don't, you know, you use like the, um, I don't know, get changes or get account info. And that's all you ever use. And you don't care about, so maybe you need get uh, account info requests, but you don't care about the rest of them. You could just remove all these. You could do a remove node and just get rid of them. Don't even bother with them. Don't don't worry about the errors. Just get rid of them, right? Because so when, that, you're, when you're saying that, what you're, I, I don't, I've never really thought about it this way, um, but what I'm hearing you say is, Look, you only care about the API surface that you need to expose and, and you need to work with. All that other functionality is still there. Yeah. It's under the hood. It will still work if something else depends upon it or needs it, but only worry about binding the things that you need to interact with. Yeah. Yeah, the, the binding is really just like that bridge between the .NET world and the actual assembly. So like just because you don't have a .NET binding for some type doesn't mean that if, you know, this... Uh, jar file calls into that type doesn't mean it's not going to work. It's still all going to be fine. So mm. yeah, that's, I, I mean, you do that less, obviously, if you're trying to create like a binding that you're going to share with other people and say like, Hey, I maintain this binding to this thing. Um, you don't want to do that because right. you don't know what types people don't use. But you know, in, in the example that we did before where it was basically like the, um, uh, what was it? The in, internal package name, you know, you're pretty confident that people aren't using those. So I think that's, that's kind of an okay way to do it. Um, so, I mean, look, we got rid of, uh, what, four, 30, 38 errors or something like that in one one line of code. It's not doing so badly. Um, and now we've got this This one is, uh, this one's fun. I, I'm going to assume this one's going to be a pain. Um, so let's start digging, digging down. So, uh, you know, let's look at the error again. So it uh, doesn't implement the interface member nodes. Uh, nodes cannot implement that because it does not have the matching return type of I list. So let's start looking for a nodes property and see what exactly it's complaining about. Um, so get nodes, set nodes. So here's our property. So we have this, you know, this I list um, of all the of this type of node, and that's that's all right. Um, but it doesn't seem to like that. It doesn't seem to, to want to convert that into an I list. And now I, I think what we probably have to do is because that, there's the this system collection is generic, like this .NET I list. But there's probably also an I list in in our Java binding somewhere too. So I think 
Um, probably our next step is let's take a look and see what this interface looks like. Um, so do, do, does that, uh, okay. So let's let's take a look at that get chain the code for this one. So remember if we come down here and we do uh, cloud drive dot model what was it called I get changes response. All right, let's take a look. And this one, you know, uh, implements this other one, so it might be down there too. Let's just see if nodes exists here. Get set nodes. All right, so oh yeah, so here, here's I guess our problem, right? Like we have this um, non-generic version of this list, but our other thing has like the generic version of it. Um, I don't think so. We could, we could make an attempt. We could try and, and make this be uh, just a simple, we, like we could do the manage type change and try and do it that way. If memory serves me correctly, that ends up giving us uh, an error uh, because the generated code can't convert what it thinks it should be into this simple I list. So we kind of have to help it out a bit. Um, so here, here's another new approach, and, and this is kind of a, a different way of doing things. Um, first, let's do. We might have, I forget the. We might have to. I think property name is the name of the thing. Essentially, what I'm thinking is like let's change the property name of that nodes thing, and we're gonna expose our own nodes property that is the right type um, through a, a C sharp addition. So, up until this point, we've talked about doing, you know, this. Um, metadata transforms, but there's a whole other category of things we can do. So if you notice, let's go back to one of these files. If you notice that all of these are generated with the partial keyword, um, that means that we can actually kind of do some stuff with them. We can hook into them. So I'll, what I what I need to do is basically bring that here. Let's make a new C sharp class. And you'll often see we just kind of name these like additions.cs or whatever. And I'm just going to stub this in. And so and we can get rid of this attribute because it already exists on the other partial declaration. Um, so what we could do here is I list nodes. And I'm not going to properly implement this at just quite yet. Um, so we have this getter setter. Okay, so it already contains a definition. So that's what. So we've created our own definition. So now we essentially have to like figure out. Well, okay, how do we, um, how do we like make this proper? Um, and so there's a couple different ways of doing that. One of them is we could totally remove this node. Let's let's try that first. Um, but before we do that, because we still have to figure out what the actual code looks like to make that happen, um, and we might have to do the set nodes as well. And count. I don't know that we need uh, count would be one, I suppose. Let's just get rid of this because we know it's called set nodes. All right, so if we removed those, <clears throat> I think we would be able to keep our additions that we created here. Um, but we still need to actually implement this, right? So we need to come and get some code for this. So one of the, the simplest ways, let me just remember the, the class name here or the interface. Uh, oh. Um, that's removing it on the interface. We might actually want to remove it on the implementation of the interface instead. So I think that was, this is the interface, right? Yep, and this is the actual implementation. So let's find nodes. And let's just copy this code all over here. Let's see how far up I have to go. So we're basically going to cheat a little bit and copy the code that was already generated for this and just change it and fix it up. So that's one approach to doing it. I'm not sure that this is actually going to be the easiest way because we sometimes have to change some code in here that's not that's not going to like casting back and forth. But let's try this anyway. Um, so we need to get some classes imported here. Um, we'll obviously want to change this to be just a normal I list, right? Not a generic one. Um, what else do we need to change here? I don't know if this Java... Yeah, we have a non-generic version of it, so that's cool. Let's try that. 
and let's change our setter. We need to import some more types here. System doesn't even exist. Um, so let's do non-generic version, basically replacing all of the code that was generated for us with this sort of non-generic version of it. Yeah, so some of these are going to still be errors because we haven't rebuilt and those nodes haven't been removed. So the, you know, the this existing, if we were to just clear this out now, that might actually make it more happy for the time being until it gets overwritten again. Um, so it doesn't like this nodes. Okay, so some variable still here is has not been changed. Let's just go to the definition. Not right, literally right above it. All right. I don't, yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. Looks good, I think, so far. Now the trick will be rebuilding and seeing if it actually, you know, is happy with that. And Do you have to do something to prevent it from re-scripting that? Yeah, so what I did was, oh, you know what, I, I didn't do the right thing yet. Um, it's not going to remove them. Uh, the idea here is to remove node on both of the, like, the getter and the setter, uh, but I did that on the interface, so that's going to cause all sorts of problems until I fix that anyway. Um, so let's go back here and and fix the, the path to this. Uh, I think it's just class this instead of interface. So for this type, we want to remove, and we'll keep the method names in here. We want to remove the class, the method from this particular class. All right, so yeah, the idea then is like, we remove the automatic generation of those types, right? Or of those methods, and we substitute it with our own. Um, what's the that Bill Nye quote? I reject your reality, or uh, maybe it's not Bill Nye. That's that's who I remember hearing hearing it from. So, but no, it's, it's this, Adam Savage. <laughs> Adam Savage. Uh, so by doing this, you now own this code. You, yeah. You, any any future updates to this library that might impact this, it's on you. That is exactly correct, and that's part of the annoying, you know, part of doing this. And you'll see we we do this, not you know. A, a trivial, not a trivial amount in our own bindings for like Android support and stuff. Um, yeah, so now we get all sorts of new errors. Oh, there we go. That's better. All right, so we, you know, we whittled down. We have one less error. We fixed that one potentially. Um, so we, th this, these are the same types of errors, though, right? So we could generally do the same pattern um, for each of these. Gotcha. Is it reasonable ever to go back to the original library author and say, hey, <laughs> uh, this is causing problems. You're blocking .NET developers from being able to use your stuff easily. Would you consider changing this? Here's a pull request. Yeah, I mean, I, in this particular, I, I think in some cases that is totally reasonable. Um, this this case in particular, I don't think is one of those cases. Um, but that's certainly, you know, we've certainly seen that where, um, the way the Java library was constructed just makes life really difficult to translate into into a C sharp binding, and I think I don't think that's a an, a crazy ask of some authors, especially if you were to go with them to them and say like, hey, listen, if you change, not just like can you fix this, but like here's how I would fix it, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I we have we haven't really done that at all that I'm aware of. Like I can't think of examples where that's actually happened, but I know there's been times. Mostly in, in, in Google stuff where I've been like, oh, I wish I could tell them to change this to this and it would make our life a lot easier. But, um, you know, it's Google. They're not going to go changing their Android support libraries for Xamarin. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think that's a, a crazy uh, a crazy notion by any means. Well, you know, in, in this uh, new day and age, more open source, more collaboration, perhaps it's something we can grow into. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, um, well we oh, just so have a few minutes yeah. left. We got uh, five minutes. We've been going for an hour fifty-five ish. Um, yeah, I have some meetings coming up. Actually, I have a meeting with you in five minutes. But no, I, think that's we, true. I think we can skip it. <laughs> yeah, maybe today we'll skip. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, this was uh, super helpful. I'm glad we got this recorded. I think there's a lot of really cool tips and tricks in here. Um, good principles that you've shared. What uh, I mean, I'm kind of cutting you off here, but yeah, no, it's a. I think it's a good stopping point. Other, yeah. Other things. Oh, you're huge again. I really wish OBS would fix this because just <laughs> if I'm not here to fix you, 
Who's gonna? Yeah, who is? Nobody. It's gonna be a problem. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I, I think like if you followed Elon for enough of the stream, you probably, you probably can tell like there's, there's no, unfortunately, there's no easy answer to most problems. Now, you'll start to see patterns emerge the more that you do these. And you know, having said that, that's something that. Um, our team needs to do a better job of of kind of communicating more with the the Android team and kind of saying, hey, there's these these patterns that we're seeing, and you know maybe can we look at making the generator be better, smarter about them. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know I think that's something that I'd like to see m- more going forward. But it, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of trial and error, um, and I think the most important thing is just to always consider like what that that progression of how bindings work is. Right, you've got the, the jar file that you spit out the API XML for, you've got the opportunity to change that with your transforms with through XPath. And then you've also got this opportunity to say like, oh, you know, totally remove this and add in my own, co- own, own code for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, the one thing I didn't get to today, that the last thing I'll say about the, the kind of the technique that we use, the, the other way that we sometimes fix some of these is... Um, using metadata to rename the one that gets generated to something like underscore nodes. And then sometimes you can get away with coming in here and saying, you know, um, make your own version of the method. And then as your getter, you're going to return uh, nodes dot, or nodes, right? As um, Because like sometimes C Sharp is like, okay, with even though underscore nodes is a generic version of this. Sometimes I can kind of like case that to just be the non-generic version of it. And you can kind of get away with that. And then same with the setter, you would, you would set the no, nodes and you'd have to do like Java cast to the, the type of the collection that it would actually be, or just an, a normal .NET cast. So sometimes you can get away with different techniques like that too. So mm-hmm. um, lots of lots of ways to solve the same problem. And um, it's there's not really any right or wrong way. It's just kind of getting there. Well, I think we should definitely do this some more because yeah. in, 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 every new case that you find is a new, you know, opportunity to, to, to learn how to do these sorts of things. And then there's a new metadata trick that you show or like then the yeah. additions file comes up. So, um, we, we can continue on these libraries or we could, uh, pick something yeah. new, but maybe we can make this a recurring thing. Cause yeah, I know sure. that, uh, a lot of people hung around uh, and listened and joined. And uh, this is a constant area, even internally for, for our support oh, staff yeah. uh, on how to help customers do bindings and things like this. So, cool. This was well, really, yeah, th- really good, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for everyone sticking around and watching. And hopefully we, we all learned something. <laughs> we learned uh, Control RR F2. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know F2 I learned for, a few for, things, for, but for you know, that's not surprising. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the fun thing about doing this is that we all learn. And there you go. You just resized again. Oh, man. All right, man. Well, uh, let's get back to doing real work. Real work. Yeah. <laughs> about that time. Yeah, it is. And uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining. And uh, we'll, we'll see you uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, Cyril from France is going to be joining, and we're going to be doing Zappy. We're going to be doing some new UI mm-hmm. for Zappy. Um, uh, a new login screen. So that'll be really cool. Two Eastern, I think, is when we're doing that. Um, and then we'll schedule some more for the following week. Probably not going to be an everyday thing for us uh, now that uh, we need to get back into a routine here, but a couple times a week for sure. And uh, awesome. Cool. cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Ciao. Thanks. Bye. Woohoo. The thanks screen. Hang on a second.